I'm Tamika Isaac Devine. I'm a wife, a mom, an entrepreneur, and a city councilwoman. Hello, I'm Jamie Devine, a husband, a father, and a community champ. I've been married to my wife, Tamika, for over 15 years. Join us as we interview some of our favorite couples, hear their stories, and be inspired. The secret to our successful marriage is that we are very intentional about our date nights. Hi, I'm Jamie. Hi, I'm Tamika. And we, we are, are the, the Divines. Divines. Thank you so much for joining us for this month's episode of Date Night with the Divines. A Date Night with the Divines is our opportunity to introduce you to couples that we admire and that inspire us. So today we are so excited to invite you to our Date Night with the Divines. Tonight we have with us uh, Roscoe and Eva Wilson. Roscoe is the uh, is a business consultant and lobbyist, also owner of a basketball training company where he develops uh, young people basketball skills. And Eva is also a special assistant to the Richmond One Board of School Commissioners, and she's also the owner of uh, unique handbags and personal accessories. And she is also um, the co-founder, along with Roscoe, of the Asia Wilson Foundation. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very happy yeah. about being here. Thank you, thank you. So you guys have been married over 27 years. So tell us a little bit about the beginning of Roscoe and Eva. Well, um, we met on a project, on a special project. And just from there, uh, formed, formed a friendship. And just from that point, just sort of uh, blossomed. And uh, I think we definitely we became friends first before anything. Yeah. We, yeah. That was not even a thought process in the beginning. We were just working, working together, we got some things that are like minded, and it just blossomed from there. Okay. Right. That's exactly how it was. Just like um, Russell said, you know, it's, all, it's really kind of funny the way it happened because we were friends <laughs> and we never even realized when it was headed in another direction because, you know, we were just friends from the beginning. Now we're still friends 27 years old, 27 years later. So it just kind of happened that way. Yeah, that's amazing because, yeah. you know, that's one thing that we always talk about is that if you have that foundation of friendship, um, you certainly will have a long lasting marriage and you know you get people who you know they're they're dating and they want to fall in love quickly and they don't really get to know each other and they're not friends and you know unfortunately sometimes you even know married couples don't even like each other right, right. so right. that I love the fact that y'all y'all were friends yeah. so and and Roscoe Roscoe actually played um, uh, semi-professional ball so tell us about that now even did you already like basketball did he have to train you and teach you about basketball well, no and and the downside, of, I would say, so is when he was doing that, I was we were not we were not together, so I didn't get to enjoy that part of it. Okay. But as but with me growing up, just you know, in middle school and high school, I was a cheerleader, so I was always around some type of sports, whether it's football or basketball or whatever. So I kind of learned to like it. By accident. Yeah, I would say by accident. That's how I learned to like it. Yeah. So, can you play? No. <laughs> and the Asian remind me all the time uh -huh. that I cannot play. And I know nothing about basketball. So, they remind me. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So, Asia, that uh, Eva is referencing, um, Roscoe and Eva are the parents of Asia Wilson, of uh, the number one WNBA draft pick mm -hmm. and rookie of the year, and currently plays for the Las Vegas Aces yes. and certainly um, a young lady that we are so proud of yes. watched her grow up. Um, so kind of talk to us a little bit about that. I mean, y'all have an extraordinary um, athlete as a daughter. Um, and I know that Roscoe played ball and, and so how did y'all know? When did y'all first know that she was talented? And what did you guys do as a couple and as her parents to nurture her talent? Well, I mean, we started out just like a lot of other parents. You know, you get your child involved in all kinds of different things. I mean, Asia did tap, she did ballet, swimming, play, um, gymnastics. She did all sports, basketball. You know, just to try to team building kind of skills is what we set out to do. But, of course, you know, with Roscoe, 
had a play ball, he knew a little bit more about the dynamics of, you know, how to get her to a certain point. So he took that part on okay. um, for her. When she finally narrowed it down, I think in the sixth grade that she narrowed it down to one sport. She said, Mom, I'm not dancing, I'm not playing piano, I'm not doing any else stuff anymore. I'm just going to just focus on basketball. So that's when she and Roscoe had their talk. Okay. And um, it, it kind of went for that. But Roscoe can tell you a little bit more about the training part of it. Well, you know, we, we didn't, I had no idea that we had such an athlete in that age. Wow. I think wow. that that developed. Wow. But it's good. the first thing, I, I, was, I always wanted to work with her just as an athlete. Not necessarily for basketball, or right. necessarily just to be nimble because we could see she could, she was going to be rather tall. Right. And a lot of times, you know, tall people are considered being clumsy and mm-hmm. awkward, you know, right. Right. big feet. And <laughs> so I wanted to disavow all of that. Right. So Asian, when you walk out there, you're going to be graceful. That's right. So that's right. We just we just did different things. I mean, we I mean, we Asian and I used to play with a balloon. A balloon? A balloon. And and, mm-hmm. and, and and what I would do was for body balls. He liked body balls. Okay. So what I would do was I'd pop the balloon in the air and I'd tell him when she could go and get the balloon before it hit the before it hit the floor. Okay. And it just sort of worked out. She turned out to be a, a magnificent volleyball player. Oh wow. And then we would play soccer in the den also. Uh-huh. Where we would have the ball could not touch the steps and my ball could not touch the fireplace. And we would just go back and forth and then we're just playing around. We would wrestle. Right. Asia was the rock. Okay. And I was Rakishi. I don't know if y'all remember Rakishi. <laughs> Rakishi would, uh, uh-huh. would knock you out, then he'd sit on your face. That's right. That's right. And, yes, uh, yes, so she and I yes, would just, yes. we'd, we'd be we'd be in, in bed at home, and I had this pillow, and I had a pillow, I'd be knocking Asia down. And she couldn't have been more than like six, seven years old. But all I want to do is just interact with her, mm-hmm. you know, just to be a daddy, interact with her. Because she was kind of a little bit of a tomboy, you know, paying like 50 50. Right. You know, and so uh, I, it surprised me that one of my co workers gave her a football, a little LSU football. Right. Okay. Yeah, she she did, let's go outside. So we were throwing football. I'm throwing football with my daughter. Right. Which, right. you know, I just I, I blew my mind. But that's, that's, that's how it kind of started out. Okay. But as you can see, you know, Asia starts to grow. Right. You can see she's, I mean, she's taking class pictures and it's Asian and the rest of the class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. But so we just we just worked right. together and we, we 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 didn't so much plan it at the time. Mm-hmm. We were just trying to let our daughter be her so, what, what she wanted to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she wanted to be. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. And that's good. important because I think yeah. sometimes there are parents who kind of push their children mm-hmm. into yes. stuff. And you kind of yes. have to know yes. what yes. they yeah. like and, and what mm-hmm. they want to do. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah. that's good. You know, you, when I, when, if we didn't even push it, we pushed her to be a, a good person. We pushed her to be, you know, forthright, honest, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Don't be, you know, don't take advantage of people. We would definitely push for that. We demanded that kind of yeah. respect yeah. other people, that kind of thing. But as far as being something we wanted to be, other than that, a good person, you know, we, you let it, we, we try to let it develop. I mean, it, it, not rocket science. It's just, you just want your child to be just to be happy, just to be happy, in her own, uh, happy and, and content in her own skin, right. and that's just what we strive for. We still we do it. We're still doing it right now. That's good. That's good. So that kind of leads me to kind of a, another question. So, did you all disagree about her future, where you thought she should be? I think we kind of asked that question earlier. And then, if you did, how did you resolve those disagreements? And then, what could you share with with others on how to, how to resolve? I'm not really conflict? sure that we. I'm not really sure that we disagree. Okay. Per se, because Roscoe and I are pretty good with staying in our own lanes. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you have a, 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 I call it a student athlete type mm-hmm. situation going on in your, in your household, you have to know what lane you're in. Right. Roscoe right. was the athlete side, I was the student side. Okay. You know, so you're a tag team. I, yeah, yeah. I try not to go over to the athletic side. That's Sometimes right. I would trip Sometimes over. Sometimes she fails. Right. Sometimes she right. fails. Okay. Sometimes she fails. Right. 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 Sometimes she fails. Uh-huh. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. okay. That's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But yeah, right. but we kind of understood, you right. know, our our roles. Our, our roles. And so that kind of helped us to mm-hmm. not necessarily disagree. Just kind of, you know, channel and funnel mm-hmm. what it is she wanted to do. Right. It's kind of it's kind of what we did. Right. It's important for us. It's important that. For us in Asia, knew that we had differences. Mm-hmm. That's what, that's what shapes a child's life because you know fathers and mothers. You know, if it's too heavy on one side, too heavy on the other side, 
it may work out, but if you have some type of balance, <laughs> where you know, so Asia knows right now, we don't agree, there's a, there's a lot of things we don't agree on, right? Yeah. But it's not about me winning or her winning, it's about what's best for the family, what's right. best, you know, so right. it's a give and take. But um, I, I don't, I don't profess to do anything other than my, about if my daughter wanted to be an athlete, then I was going to help her. But she said she, she liked the sports. She, she played a lot of sports. Track, she ran track. Oh, she was she? all state and everything. Oh, good. So she did all that. Okay. Volleyball. But then what happens is that you don't get a break. See, people think they want their kids to play all these sports, but they gotta understand right. your body has to rest. Right. So if you right. play volleyball, softball, right. basketball, you know, and right. back to back, you're really not getting any rest. So I told her, hey, listen, you need, you need to make, we need to, we need to call one, get one sport. Right. We're gonna focus on that sport. And she right. said, Daddy, I want to be the best athlete mm -hmm. in the world. I want to be, I don't want a gold medal. I don't want a high school championship. I want a national championship. And it's okay if you want to do that, age, you don't got to work for it. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. So right. that's where the discussion came in about how are we going to, how are we going to do this? So what, what's what, what's going to be our role? What's going to be your role, Asia? Yeah. And she she bought right into it. That's good. That's good. That's good. So, so so what were some of those? And, and don't don't tell us all your secrets. But what were some of those practices like, and some of those things that you all did from the athletic perspective? And we're talking a little about the student side, mm -hmm. even how you contributed to the student side. So, Russell, can you start first with the athletic? What were some of the things that you trained her in, or, 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 yeah. or skill set? Athletic, athletically, I knew I played for ten years in, in professionally in Europe. Okay, uh, and. The one thing about Europe is that Americans, well, generally where Americans are playing on teams, there were only generally two Americans on each team. Okay. And they required so much of you because you had to play almost the whole game. You had to be very, very versatile. Okay. I mean, everything. You got a handball pass. I mean, that's why you find in the NBA now these European players that are so versatile. Wow. If you want to, that's that's wow. why because they're not they're not a, they're not they're not specialty athletes. Okay. Some of our athletes, specialty okay. athletes. Okay. They are more well rounded. They can pass. They can shoot. They can handle the ball. All that. So I said, Age, I'm gonna teach you everything I learned. Mm -hmm. You know, dribbling, shooting, jumping. But the other thing is too is is sacrifice and focus and commitment. Right. You see, people miss that part. They mm -hmm. see the athlete, the, the, the athlete. Mm -hmm. They see the athlete's success, right. but they don't really look at what kind of commitment that athlete had to make, or what kind of disciplines they had to yeah. have right. to get to that point. That's right. You know, she couldn't go to all the proms. She missed some prom. Missed about two proms, man. Yeah, she missed some proms. Wow. She missed yeah. going thing, going to different things because she had to get a rest. Right, and she had to get a lesson. Because I said, Asia, you going? You ain't equal. You know. I'll pay for I'll pay for high school. Right. And you pay for college. That's right. And that's, and that's, so, that's, that's a good deal. deal. That's what we did. Yeah, we said she deal. agreed. She, that's she, a good she deal. agreed. So yes, exactly. it, from that point, it was tough. It was still tough, but it was easier than what it would have been if we had had not had to talk. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. Asia, you want to do this? I said I'll help you. This is what she has to do. Early morning, late night. Right. So she put the work in. She put the work in. She put the work, she put the work in, in and, it's, and it's paying off now. Right. And she, I think she sees it in a way. Right. Right. All those early mornings, me getting on face. I used to be very, very, well, I mean, I shouldn't say I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was in your face. I'm, right. you, know, you were a coach. Yeah, you, you were a coach. You have to love your child. That's right. And your child has to know you before you get in your child's face. Right. If your child doesn't know you, right. then you get in your child's face or right. something. It, it's tough. It's, it's, right. It appears to be abuse. Right. But Asia knew what I was doing. Right. And she knew it. She knew I said, I'm, I'm, I'm on you. We, oh, we go right. back and forth. Right. And then she'd go home and tell her mom. And then <laughs> she and her mother mad at me. And I had to go to the room. And that's I, right. couldn't, that's I, couldn't, right. I couldn't socialize with that's her. Right. Right. That's all right. That's what happens. It's, it's, right. it's not so much the training. The training was there. Mm -hmm. But you have to get buy-in first from the right. child. You know, uh, the commitment and focus. I, I just call it commitment and focus and sacrifice. Good. You know, yeah. it's just, it's just you, know, you got to go to bed on time. You got to eat the right foods. All that type of thing. So you would tell us a little bit about the, uh, about the student side. Well, and it's really no secret. I mean, you know, um, as a parent, just like you mentioned, Mika, as a parent, you want to make sure that there is balance in your child's life. Okay, well, whatever that means. Right. You want to make sure there's balance. So for me, um, and I always told Asia, I would be so glad when I graduated from Heathwood Hall because <laughs> I felt like I was in every grade with her. Right. We're talking about homework, right. test preparation. I'm making practice tests. I mean, we um, doing um, 
study session with the school. Mm-hmm. I'm like, my goodness, when am I going to graduate? Right. I mean, because I right. felt like I was in every grade. Mm-hmm. But that's what you do. Right. So you, you was right there with her. Yes. The I mean, you know, as a parent, you have to be there with them. Mm-hmm. It, you can't expect the school district. Right. Okay. Right. The home district. Let's start right. there first. That's right. The home district. That's right. Mm-hmm. So that it kind of happens that way. But that's kind of what Roscoe and I did. I mean, I just helped her along. And and you are, I guess some people may know this too, um, that Asia ended up being diagnosed with dyslexia, mm-hmm. which made it a little more difficult mm-hmm. before she was diagnosed. Mm-hmm. And so that was one thing that I did notice um, with her, that it took a little more time for test preparations and that kind of stuff. So okay. that's what we did. That's what we did. And um, once she got diagnosed as being dyslexic, then she was able to get the accommodations and the resources that she needed, which made a tremendous, tremendous difference. But just just being there for for your kid, right. you know, That's parents great. have to be parents, That's right? right. Yeah. So you so you were definitely that support role for. Oh yeah, okay. and, and the yeah. advocate to make sure she oh, was yeah. getting what she needed. Yes, yes, yes. definitely. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we need to take a break um, and thank our sponsors. Um, I want to thank our great sponsors who, without them, we wouldn't be able to do Date Night with the Divides. So we're going to thank State Farm Isaac Insurance Agency, uh, Dr. Macy Smith, Style by Nada, the amazing stylist who helps me out every day, uh, John T. Elliott Professional Hair Design, we've got Visions Made Plain, who is our production company, and a camera, and um, also we have Shana Boston of Boston First Administrative Management Services. And I definitely cannot go on without thank our event sponsor, our venue sponsor for today. Today we are dining at the Blue Marlin, which is here in the Vista in downtown Columbia. Blue Marlin is an amazing restaurant that is in an old uh, train station. It's historic. Uh, the food is delicious. So next time you are looking to have a great date night, you need to check out the Blue Marlin. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Councilwoman Tamika Isaacs Devine, first African American woman elected to the Columbia City Council. Committed. She is very committed uh, to the improvement of our community. Bold in that she's willing to talk about difficult issues. Not only is she a leader in her community, she's a leader in her sorority. She's an excellent example of what leadership is. I'd go anywhere, anytime to do anything for Tamika Isaac Devine. Welcome back to Date Night with the Divines, and thank you so much to all of our sponsors. So again, I said we're here at the beautiful Blue Marlin downtown, downtown Vista. So you may hear a little bit of background noise. It's a restaurant, but we're thank- so thankful that y'all are joining us. So Roscoe and Eva, before we went to the break, we were talking about um, the support that you have to give mm-hmm. to your child when they're you know coming up, especially when they're really, really active. Um, and then your child has an amazing career that y'all have been very supportive of. So when you have a child that you, you know, a lot of couples we know pour everything into their children, um, but they don't always make time for themselves. So how do you guys, with such an active schedule and, and doing so much for your, your child, how do you find time for just Roscoe and Eva? Well, you know, it's uh, it comes from the plan. You know, we, like I said, we were already planned that we were going to do this and make these sacrifices and provide the support. So first of all, from a, from a mental perspective, we already know that we're going to be fully occupied with our daughter. So those times, a lot of times we had is when, like for example, when Asia played in high school, I mean, we would have to drive to Lawrence Manning. Okay. You know, so there we have time in the car. Okay. We talk, we laugh, we talk about stuff, let's, let's yeah. listen to music, we talk, or wherever we are, we're trying to find something there to relate to, whether it be friends, 
Because what happened, we had a little village, child right. with us. Right. So the village would either ride with us, right. and then we in the car talking, mm-hmm. generally it's another couple. Right. And we we find time there. Okay. If Asia's is away and we are home, then it's a lot of time, it's quiet time. A lot of time I'll be in my chair, she'll be in there, she'll be on her couch. <laughs> All right, that's right. And she's doing what she's doing. And sometimes it's just quiet time. Sometimes, you right. know, just, and uh, I can't say that we, I, don't, I can't say we have a lot of date night. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Not a date night, but, uh, like that, right. going out. Mm-hmm. But just to, to substitute that, it's just a matter of, 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 of respecting respecting each other's uh, space and time. You. you know, a lot of times, just the fact that you know, I may go upstairs, she may be downstairs or vice versa. Right. And I can look at what I want to look at, be on the computer, do what I need to do. And right there, for us, that's a date night, because it's quiet time, we can say things done. So yeah. date nights would be not your, our date nights would be your typical date night. Right. No, that's the, <laughs> we, 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 did, we did a date night to Lithuania. <laughs> okay. Okay. With the Lithuania okay. didn't see Asia play, but because of security, we couldn't be around Asia all the time because right. you know security had Asia mm-hmm. all somewhere else. We see it when the game time comes. So right. we had we had a, a sixty minute drive to the to the arena and a sixty minute drive back to the arena. So your time. Maybe we're another yes. couple. And then we can walk around town and shop and do different things right. while she is with her team. So. I think it's important that you, you don't necessarily lock yourself into going to somewhere other than date night with your vine. Yeah, that's not right. That's right. Let me make sure of that. Make, go to date night with the vine. Anything else? Don't do anything. You're a good man. You're a good man. That's right. That's right. You're pretty much homebodies. I mean, you know, we don't. I mean, we don't go out a whole lot. We really right. don't. Right. I mean, we could be at home, like I said, order some pizza, or whatever, you know, and just be at home doing nothing. Right. Really. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and because we don't go out a whole lot, it's, some people say, well, you're outside a date. Well, it is a date. Yeah. Yeah. date is what you make. Right. It's that time you spend together. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. It's, quality, it's a quality, quality time, time that, that you deem quality. Right. That's right. Because, right. you know, sometimes going out, we, we went to the Isaac Brothers. Yeah, when I took care of Okay. Yeah, we did that. And uh, it was it was it was real nice old school. That's right. Both of uh, you know, we from di- slightly different eras, but she was a big Isaac brother. She uh, yeah. I didn't know she liked that that, that music of that area. I love the Isaac brothers. Right. I grew up with them. Mm-hmm. So those are the kind of things we try to uh, we try to yeah. be involved with. Oh, okay, no problem at all. No problem. At all. As, no problem. as part of my baby's voice. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. And he shared. Yes. That's right. Yes. I will share. I will share. So as you guys continue to um, continue to eat and, and we continue that conversation, we want to um, ask you again about um, as you as you look towards now the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is that? Is, how do, what does that quality time look like uh, amongst yourselves? Um, and then. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the foundation okay. um, as mm-hmm. well. So, so let's turn out to let's turn to, to the Asia Wilson Found Foundation. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about you know how you found it, what's the purpose, what's the mission, what's the vision, <laughs> well, and, well, actually, and how folk can get in touch with you know. Actually, well, not well. Our even our little date night, we we'll call it, right. changes now because we travel. We try to travel with okay. Asia to her games, right. so that gives a little you know better opportunity so, to go to different places right. and yeah. do different things. So that's kind of changed since she started. Um, Playing professionally, but as far as the foundation is concerned, it was all Asia's idea. Uh-huh. It was all Asia's idea, um, and the mission is to provide resources for youth that's, and families that struggle with dyslexia. Oh, um, wow. Just have that's good. camps, workshops, seminars, those kind of things, just to help them with resources, making sure they get the resources. But like I said earlier, once Asia got the resources, right. dramatic change, and right. there's so many kids that are undiagnosed, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. And so with that being kind of a situation for them and trying to get their parents to understand, I'm doing all I can, because that's how Asia was with us. Right. It wasn't that she wasn't doing all she could, but it was a processing part of it. Right. Right. So once we figured all that out and got her diagnosed then the resources came. So what we want to do is like have camps, like I said, camps, workshops, summits, things like that, so that families can come together and hear about the different resources that are out there that they may not know about. Okay. And the other, her, her, her platform is twofold. It's a dyslexia for youth, but then it's also the um, bullying. She, she wants to also tie in um, bullying, providing resources for kids that may be being bullied mm-hmm. and resources for parents to help identify if your child is being bullied. Mm-hmm. And um, so basically, here again, that'll be through summits, 
mm -hmm. um, workshops, camp, just different little things that we can do um, to help that along within the school districts, churches, and just community involvement. So, because as we already know, a lot of times kids that suffer with learning disabilities are bullied. Right. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Oh, wow. So basically, that's that's what she thought of. And so as a result of that, we Roscoe and I said, okay, well, we'll we'll help you with that. Right. So that's kind of how that all came about. Sure. And, and, and another thing to add to that is that many times, particularly young children, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I, I would imagine kids all the way up to, to 12th grade, when you label something, it's a stigma, you know. Mm -hmm. If you say learning disability, uh, or, or you, it, it just sort of resonates with kids. Oh my God! So they don't want to. They, they don't want to uh, discuss it, right? Because mm -hmm. it sounds seems to be a weakness. So we, mm -hmm. we, we try to address it with Asia as a challenge. You, you, right. you got a couple of challenges here mm -hmm. that you got you have to work with. You know, I, I have challenges. Because uh, I'm probably was dyslexic in school, and just didn't know it. Didn't know. Probably why it took me nine years to finish algebra. That's all right. But you finished. <laughs> but I finished algebra. But you finished. I, I finished algebra. That's right. But those are the kind of things that we were just so sensitive to. I mean, we just we love that girl so much. I don't want to have any challenges, and if there's a challenge, we're gonna help her through it. You know. So any little thing that she would tell us about what she had to go through, we we take it in. And we try to make sure that other people not may not have to go through that, right? You know, yeah. and so the, the, the foundation is helping us develop some obviously revenue right. to to be able to to to, to put toward it those programming, right? right. And right. also an understanding and a, and a wealth of knowledge of what parents go through. You know, what, you know, I have parents come up to me say, I didn't, you know, they didn't know that their kid was dyslexic, right. you know? And I said, well, you know, you, you talk to your school, tell them you want to get them tested, you know, right. interact with your school. That's the other right. thing, getting parents to interact with, with, with the so school system. You know, school, you know, you know right. they, yeah. they get a little intimidated, but you, yeah. you got to, this is a, for your child. Or well, I walk up in any board meeting and right. so this is for my child, That's I will. Right. So it's those kind of things, empowering parents to, to, to invest in your child and not necessarily just money, Invest your time, your energy, and research. Right, and and, and advocate. And advocate. advocate. Definitely yeah. advocate. Yeah, you're the best advocate, the best for, the advocate for the child. Advocate. As we know, exactly. right. you know, right. that's why um, it took Asia so long to publicly come out about it. She only mm -hmm. came out last yeah, year. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so she, you know, she. But that was something that she had to come to terms mm -hmm. with when she wanted to, or if she wanted to, mm -hmm. make it public because she didn't want people to look at her like. You know, she's weak or, you know, it's mm -hmm. or anything like that. She don't want any of that. Mm -hmm. So we just allowed her to decide when she wanted to, if she wanted to, right. come out public about it. And once she did, the outpouring of people, mm -hmm. old people, young people that really like, wow, right. I, I didn't know you had that. How did you make it? You know, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many people that struggle with a whole lot of things that yes. mm -hmm. they don't know other people struggle with as well. But once she did that, I mean, we had parents calling. We had people from other countries reaching out oh, to wow. us and to her about, you know, dyslexia and um, how they're so happy that she came out because that makes her human. Yeah. Right. right. That's right. Because so many That's people right. don't think she's human. Yeah. But right. with her having to deal with that, it's like, okay, hmm, if she can do the things she's doing and have a learning disability, surely I can. That's right. So that's, and that's one of the reasons why she um, wants to start a foundation because she is so aware she just reached so many people. That's good. So many yes, yes. She, she, she had, yeah. you know, we, I have to, I empathize with her because, you know, when you have dyslexia, did you, did you see the movie, um, Night School, what's it, with, with, with Kevin Hart, Hart and, and, and Tiffany Hanson? I haven't seen that. That should be a date night. Day night. Day, day night. Day night. Day night. Real. He okay. was, he was dyslexic. Okay. So he would go to the board and the numbers would just start moving all over the place, you know, and he was, he just couldn't work, figure it out. Because mm -hmm. can you imagine being dyslexic? Yeah. And and it's 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 you know four, two minutes left in the game, you five points down, and Coach Staley Don is going, "Oh, you do this," and she's she's on the board, mm -hmm. and she's showing all these plays like this, you know, yeah. and, and to Asia, you know, right? So Asia's looking. Asia, I look at Don, and Asia says, uh, "I look at Don and go." <laughs> <laughs> and Don know exactly what to do, uh, right? Yeah. But yeah. see, it's just that you have to make it. I just think. As parents, we tried to make it as comfortable for us as possible. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't something that she had to do by herself. Right. It wasn't anything to be that's ashamed of. Right. And right. you got a mother and father that's going to be right here with you. And that's I think right. that once kids understand that their parents are with them, because a lot of times, so that could bring you, bring the kids together. You know, mm -hmm. bring your kids and parents together. That 
Mm-hmm. You can't uh, you can't leave a kid out there by themselves. You know, it used right. to be a time my daddy put me outside, go play, go play, right. go play with that rock, that's have it. a good time with that rock. That's it. <laughs> and then come in, and then come, come in, later. come in later. That's it. But that, that's that's the whole thing. It's just it's a team situation. It's right. a team understanding, that's right. and it's a focus of what what you want for your child. It's an investment oh, right. financially, emotionally, right. you know, academically. Right. It's an investment. Kids, parents just need to invest in your kids. For whatever the best aspect we can, right? Yeah. And then, and then those who can't can come to the Asian Wilson Foundation. That's right. 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 That's that would be coming soon. Very good. So how can people find out more information um, on that? Right now, you can go to the Asia, to AsiaWilson22.com. That's her okay. website, AsiaWilson22.com. Okay. And there is a, a pull down on there that talks about the foundation. And you can even donate from her website as well. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Right. That's amazing. Amazing. Good deal. Good deal. So. <laughs> yes, we're, just, we're just a good couple. We're just a good yeah, couple. Yeah, we're so, so, just so, so, so as we're... Uh, uh, I'm assuming mm-hmm. probably getting ready to uh, close in, close out. Mm-hmm. As as I always like to ask um, our, our guests is, what advice would you um, give to a younger Eva and Roscoe, number one? And then what advice would you offer to a younger couple regarding date night and spending time together? Um, and I, let me add to that, too. Also, um, because you know, we talked about this as well, that we know so many couples who... You know, they're putting so much into their children. Mm -hmm. um, And then Mm -hmm. once their children are gone, they just they don't even know each other. And so Mm -hmm. um, what other what what advice would you also give couples who are, you know, they're raising their athletes and they're taking them You know, every weekend, Mm -hmm. AAU Mm -hmm. basketball or softball or doing different things? Uh, What would you what advice would you give them about um, making sure that you're nurturing your your couple's relationship as well as being parents? Um, I guess for me, the first piece of advice for uh, with you, Tamika, is parents that are heavily invested in their children, mm-hmm. I see how you can lose touch with each other. So mm-hmm. for Roscoe and I, we basically, for the lack of a better term, we get it in where you get in. Mm-hmm. Because you have to make every moment count. Because mm-hmm. you're not going to have that many. If you're that invested, you're not going to have that many. So... Wherever you can fit in, whether it's a movie, whether y'all just go to some cookies, some ice cream, whatever, because it's about the quality, yeah. not necessarily the quantity of the time that you spend together. So that would be one piece of advice. Get in where you fit in with it. You know, just figure it out, find it, whatever the case may be. Um, now, as far as um, the younger even Roscoe, from my side, it would be listening. Okay. Listening. Because a lot of times, couples, and Roscoe and I, we can identify with this, a lot of times you're listening to react instead of to comprehend. Mm. Oh, you're listening like so that you can that. say something. I like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why right. you listen. You didn't, you didn't hear a word they said. Right. But you're listening so you can just react to it and not right. really listen to comprehend what's going on. Wow. And that's I cool. think a lot of times that's good. just not being able to listen, mm. that causes that can cause a lot of, of friction, so to speak. Right. But right. I think that was being for me, just learning just to listen. And it took us it took us a minute to get that together. Okay. It really, really did. That's but okay. we're human. That's right. That's and once right. you identify that there's a problem and you try to fix it, then that makes it better. But I would say just, just listening. Just listen. start the process early. Mm-hmm. So we did, we, we, we started late in, obviously. But for me, there's two things is that you should say. And in all the presentations I make also, I say two things you got to make sure you say every day. You say amen and you say thank you. Mm-hmm. If you say amen, you see pray. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you say thank you, that means mm-hmm. you're thanking, for, thanking God for those blessings. Mm-hmm. All right. That's the first thing. The other thing is, is that like like Eva said, listening. I mean, we we were both of us, you know, strong will people. Okay. And when you're strong will, you, you want your way. Right. You know, and mm-hmm. sometimes husbands tend to back up and say, okay. Happy wine, happy life. That's, That's still right. gold. That's still gold, right? That's right. still gold, right? <laughs> and that change. Still yeah, goes. That's still right. gold. That's but, right. but, you know, <laughs> realistically speaking, you know, it has to be a balance. You got to have the talk. I think the, right. the, the, the mother and father have the talk. Mm-hmm. And also the talk with the child or the youth or the, or the young adult, whatever that might be. 
So when you travel in different places and you're doing things together, it's, it's real nice. Right. But once that child goes to college or the military, or whatever, yeah. then if you haven't had to talk, you can go, okay, what do we do now? Because yeah, you're, you're, living, you're living vicariously through that child. Exactly. Right. And, exactly. And, and you know, and then again, if, the, if if there's not a success in that way, maybe the child doesn't go to college. Maybe the child stays and goes to do stuff something else that maybe you didn't want them to do, but that's what they chose. That's because right. you didn't have to show. You didn't have to talk. Right. Right. So if if you have to talk, and, and for me, the younger Roscoe is just yeah, have to talk. You know, have early talk. on, yes, early right. on, try to listen more. You right. She and I used to be at the time we were just I'm waiting on what to say so I can jump on something. Jump on something. Right. You know, and, and vice versa. Right. Particularly when it came to time and knowing basketball, because I just right. you know, even you know, because I think we had a revelation at the. Uh, at the national championship. Okay. Because at one time, you know, I'd be seeing, I was like, Asia, when is Asia? Right. And she was very protective of Asia. But right. I'd be all over. And I said, Asia, Asia, Mr. Three Thing. Right. You know, right. she said, hey, leave, him, leave him alone. You know, I was like, hey. right. You know, and then one time she got, you know, in the Stanford game, she got poked in the eye. Ooh, we thought she, yeah, 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 yeah. Got poked in the, no, I didn't poke in the eye. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But she got poked in the eye, and we thought she had a detached retina. We didn't know if she was coming out. And I was, I was about to go out there, but then finally she came back out and uh, went to the free throw line to shoot, and she missed the free throw. Mm. And I was like, Asia, you know, right. come on, man. Even, right. Leave her alone. She got poked in the eye. I said, listen, she's out there. She's out there, and and. and <laughs> That's where you know the difference in mom and father come in because she needs to understand. Daddy wants to see this. Mama wants to, you know, take care of you this way. That's right. So then it blends into be. Then she forms her own perspective from right. those two entities, you know. Right. And that's what I try to do. I, you know, sometimes I'm the bad guy. Right. A lot of times I'm the bad guy. It's okay. <laughs> Most okay. of the time she's a good guy. Okay. She's a good guy. But that's what it takes. So okay. sometimes I, you know, they'll be having a good time. Let's say, hey, hey. You know, what was that time you were at Asia? Well, I said, don't y'all know we got a championship tomorrow? You remember? Yeah, yeah. We got, she was playing in a some, some game and she, Asia was home. Okay. And they just talking. And, oh, you have a hand. Uh, uh. So you wanted to be focused. Yeah, yeah. I said, like, don't y'all know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't y'all know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Don't y'all know that we got a championship tomorrow? That's we right. Got time to go to the See, That's so right. then they look at me, focus. you know. But focus. you got to hold your ground. That's right. Hold your ground. So, that's right. I, I didn't mean to, yeah, I didn't mean to get in that deep. Right. But, no, but it's but important that's good. That's good. that you have to talk. That's right. It's important and to have to talk with with you and your spouse first, mm -hmm. or significant other, right. whatever it might be. And then when you come together on it, then when you talk to your child, your child sees that you are, you know. So mm -hmm. yeah. that's that's where it is. I, I mean, we, we we've Great. enjoyed it. We've enjoyed it so far. Hopefully, we can keep moving with this. So twenty seven more, more years. Twenty seven more 27 years. Twenty seven more years. Twenty seven more years. Yep. Amen. Well, I don't know about you guys, but this has been amazing. It's it's so funny because again, the, the reason we do this is because we get to know couples on a mm -hmm. different level, mm -hmm. and everyone knows you guys um, as Roscoe and Eva. Um, but now, as my mama tells people, now y'all Asia's parents. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. People yeah. to also see Roscoe and Eva. So we thank y'all so much no, for being. Thank you. Um, our guests for this month. Yes. Um, and we thank you for watching. And please make sure that you tune in every third Monday for another episode of Date Night with Divines. And please tell your friends about it. We've gotten a lot of compliments. Everybody's telling us telling us how much you like it. Yes. Well, please share. We want to make sure that we continue to bring you great interviews. And we want to make sure that we're giving you what you need. So share it with your friends and continue to tune in. So until next time, I'm Tamika. And I'm Jamie. And... We, we are, are the, the Divines. divines. No, really.